When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stand going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish, the podcast by the three whore men of the ass pocket dicks. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> wow indeed gymnastics <laughs> <laughs> we put the ass in gymnastics oh, gymnastics <laughs> uh, putting... give me any word literally any word i'll put dicks in it <laughs> i'm mike johnson <laughs> i'm kyle Getz. and we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality and today today we are streaming live which you know if you're watching us live streaming and if you're listening to us later it's irrelevant to you because it's too late Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. It's fun with podcasting because you're like you get a birthday around episodes and like actual annual things. So it's our two hundred and fiftieth episode. Hoop Woo Hoop Opa Mo- Mopa Mazeltov <laughs> Dickla Molotov. <laughs> uh, can everybody hear us? We that's that's a thing we should probably know. Oh, yeah. We've been delivering solid content for two minutes already. We hope you heard it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's our 250th episode. Aww. So here's some bubbles. Does everybody want some bubbles? Did we confer- Did someone Gosh. reply and say yes? <laughs> Dan, you're contractually <laughs> obligated to just have that. I, no. I am participating in several of the traditional October things, <laughs> including uh, Silver October. But, so you, uh, you I can will, have some have to some clink. Oh, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. You heard it here first. Dan is contractually obligated to drink alcohol when we make him. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Happy 250. Happy 250. Holy shit. Almost five years. Yep. So uh, we'll go into our 250th episode and what all of that means and what we're going to do for it. But first. But first, some news? Yeah. Here's the news. Shut your mouth hole. It's time for your ear holes. News. 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 Do, do, well, do, no, do, no. Do, do, do they the they just oh, heard the oh. news theme, <laughs> oh. but I, I didn't make a I didn't make a scene where it cut where the news theme played over this. I only had one over the logo, so oh, they just so they saw, saw us disappear us. and saw the logo for the news theme, oh. which maybe that works. That's I don't fine. know. Hi, everybody. We're back. Mike, <laughs> read us the news. <laughs> news, news, news. It's time for the Wait, news, that didn't news. win. <laughs> oh God. Too long. Dan, shut your mouth hole. It's time for the mic hole. <laughs> yep. Well, news the first. Great. Okay, great. So British Airways, which is better in every way, I think, than 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 other airways, um, because they're British. Sure. Um, they are the latest airline to drop the binary "ladies and gentlemen" greeting hmm. over the intercom on their flights. So they are moving to use language that includes people of all genders. And uh, they said um, that it has been made in order to, quote, reflect the diversity of those traveling. Um, so, yeah. Did they say what they were replacing it with? That's always like when people are like, oh, it's so difficult. How do I do it? It's like, what could I possibly say other than ladies and gentlemen? Well, La- ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> such oh. a good one. <laughs> I, I, that was new to me. And I was like, oh, that's, it's so clean. Yeah. It's so yeah, perfect. Yeah. Distinguished guest is something like for a formal event that I hear people say. Hey, all you motherfuckers. Yeah. Depending on like, Ooh. sup, bitches. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Do you have to reel you two in now? Ba, 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 ba. Why would you? You gave me my first alcohol in like <laughs> 16 days. Oh, no. And it's bubbles. Happy, happy birthday. Uh, pilots have been told to use gender neutral language when making their pre-flight greetings and announcements. Alternatives to welcoming ladies and gentlemen could include welcoming quote people travelers passengers or guests um yeah so the um ba is actually sort of late to the game here there are a lot of uh uk institutions that have already done this Mm -hmm. um so uh, that includes EasyJet, Air Malta, Qantas, Japan Airlines, Delta, JetBlue, United and American Airlines, and um, m- most airports in the UK, or many airports in the UK. Sorry, um, but yeah. So welcome, welcome to the welcome to the non-binary tent, everybody, <laughs> or something. <laughs> welcome to your flight. You're now in a non-binary tent. Right. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right. News the second. Yeah. News the second. So, 
<laughs> Wait, is that isn't that in British? Isn't that like a? Isn't that like flipping someone? Go off? fuck yourself. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck British. yourself, everyone. <laughs> well, we don't just want ladies and gentlemen to go fuck themselves. We want everyone. This is inclusive. Fuck you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, oh I'm, my other hand is off. Yeah. Hi, mom. Uh Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I don't know. I think you might be backwards. That sign might be backwards. Happy to <laughs> Happy for, for those listening at home. Ma Johnson is on the line waiting to answer questions. And she just held up a sign that said happy 250th anniversary. Anniversary. She could do it too. <laughs> um, okay, so news the second. Great. Uh, Fox News bigot Tucker Carlson ha- went on a homophobic rant about Pete Buttigieg, quote, trying to breastfeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, okay, so Pete Buttigieg, who is our Secretary of Transportation, and his husband, Chasten, um, they just had uh, twins. And, of course, the right wing is losing their goddamn mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and l- lately, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of nastiness ranging from Tucker Carlson and this whole, like, well, which one of them is going to breastfeed the kids, blah, 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 mm-hmm. to uh, people were freaking out about the fact that he's taking paternity leave, which he's afforded under federal law. Also, uh, like, every... it <laughs> Like, shouldn't every dad, regardless of what relationship you're in, want to have the time with their child and contribute to the upbringing of their child. Like that's a weird, if you get mad at that, like that's not a gay thing. You're just an asshole. Right. Yep. Absolutely. He, he's, he is an asshole. Cause uh, yeah, I mean, that's Gr- grade no, a, no, <laughs> grade a for asshole. Grade a asshole. Um, so I also have a grade a, yeah, I don't know. So he, I mean, Tucker Carlson says like horrible shit about gay people all the time. So it's really par for the course. We really shouldn't, um, you know. It's not a surprise. We, it's not a surprise. Um, earlier this year, images resurfaced of Tucker Carlson's 1991 yearbook when he was a senior at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, in which he is listed as a member of the Dan White Society, uh, which Dan White assassinated Harvey Milk mm. and then used the Twinkie defense, which we just talked about on the Patreon segment for last week's. Uh, episode on Twinks. Which will release tomorrow. Which will release tomorrow. Join our Patreon. God willing. <laughs> I'm signing Mike up for work. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. Anyway, just... Can we just be happy? Can we just be fucking happy for Secretary Buttigieg and his family? Yeah. Can we just shut our goddamn fucking whore mouths about <laughs> anything bad when it comes to them yeah. and their new kids? Like, that... Anything you do as a queer person is political and it sucks. Like there's so many things that are like, this shouldn't be a political, like getting yeah. a vaccine. Like everyone's oh, it's so political nowadays. It shouldn't, I get it is because it is, but it shouldn't yeah. be. There's no grounds for it. Like it's just being queer existing as being a queer person. Just everything you do is political and yeah. it's not fair because there's so much joy that they should be focusing their time and attention on with twins. Um, but they don't, they don't get to do that because they're, Ooh, that's one in the, the swear <laughs> jar, the swear. meaning the phone vibrating I was jar. I scruff texting a listener. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, everybody, when we, <laughs> we are not taking Q&As over scruff today, <laughs> just so we're clear. I just wanted to make sure he remembered that today was the live stream. Oh, that's adorable. We are only so offer- sexy, sexy Ben, if you're not <laughs> watching, I hope you listen later this week when we release the episode. We are offering A's over scruff, though, but that's different yeah. and unrelated related to this yeah. podcast <laughs> no cues yeah they're no cues. Nope, just the a's up in the air waiting <laughs> with the door unlocked okay uh <laughs> news the last yeah this is awful but i want to talk about it and i'm that's I'm really the description sp- of the news right <laughs> yeah yeah that could be that that could be the song so the san luis obispo <laughs> tribune uh is reporting that two boys at paso robles high school in california posted a tiktok video in which they stole their science teacher's pride flag shit on it and then tried to flush it down the toilet all on tiktok <laughs> wrong with that. wow yeah and so the high school claims that it took disciplinary action against the boys and then announced that it was banning pride flags oh, because that was fuck. the problem <laughs> yeah wow. 
Yeah. Um, so on October 1st, teachers received a letter about a new policy to make sure that classrooms weren't politicized, mm -hmm. to your point. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. told teaching staff to remove any flags that were alterations of the American flag and limited any other flags to two feet by two feet, uh, a significantly smaller size than the flag that was stolen. And uh, uh, Paso Robles Joint Unified School District Superintendent Kurt Dobost, Dubost, who sounds like a real winner. Uh, <laughs> Are you pronouncing that wrong? Is it dumbass? D yeah, Dumas. Kurt, Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Dumas. Yeah. <laughs> Said, quote, we don't want to turn it into a politicized issue where a student enters a classroom and looks up, oh, there's a rainbow flag here, or there's a Blue Lives Matter flag here. That determines what the partisanship is of my teacher. Mm. We think that that's a real slippery slope. And so we continue to believe that this is a very reasonable compromise solution that allows rainbows, but within reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's me. I'm rainbows within reason. <laughs> um, I hate... I. I often see the pride flag being compared to the Confederate flag. It's like, no, it's not a U.S. flag. So every other flag gets grouped in this one group. And police lives matter, whatever blue lives matter bullshit you have. Like, that is not a personal identity. Right, right, you yeah. are not born a police. You were not born a Confederate. <laughs> Can you like, imagine a baby coming coming out with a badge on? Just, I mean, <laughs> in the U.S., babies are born with fully automated, like, <laughs> rifles, I think, just ready to go. Like... It's these are not equivalent things, and yeah. to put them in the same bucket of like, hey, we support cops because we love how they murder, like, or we love that country that tried to be a thing and rebelled against the U.S. and we proudly support the the losing side of that fight. Like, yeah. that's not the same as being queer. That's just it, were you just talking about Texas? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Texas? So wants so badly to be its own thing, but just no one wants someday. that. Someday, someday. I mean, yeah, um, it's gonna flip blue, and when it does, I'm gonna be so happy. It's just gonna be so enjoyable and yeah. like funny to watch people flip their shit when they like realize like all those people we hate are the majority now like yeah. what do we do we're yeah. you know all my liberal gay friends that are moving out of seattle because it's getting too expensive i keep telling them move to texas <laughs> I, i've been thinking about like it would be organizing like a move to texas like you know more and more people can work from home these days and can mm -hmm. live forever if we organize like a anyone who has the like means to move to texas for a year and vote in the next presidential election like there should be a, a flood flood texas yeah movement yeah let's do it <laughs> um to end to, to close up this story sure. uh, of course the 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 students are pissed off they think that it sends a terrible message they're not mm -hmm. down with this um, quote, when you're a high school student in the LGBT plus community, you walk into every classroom and school bathroom not knowing if you've entered a safe space. Mm -hmm. You endure angry stares, hurtful comments, and relentless assaults of microaggressions that erode our mental health and self-confidence. It is exhausting. It is oppressive. It is unacceptable. And so we're coming out against hate. They have organized a forum titled Coming Out Against Hate that will be held at the school in on the 20th of October. Hmm. Today, when this releases, right? Oh. Or yesterday when this releases <laughs> um so hopefully some good comes out of that yeah. forum fuck you paso robles high school and principal dumbass or whatever and principal dumbass uh and, but that's the news oh uh, i thought okay i thought you were going to mention there there feels in the similar vein of like the person that is the one being attacked the one getting punished the netflix um the the leader of the trans like corporate group or whatever yeah. that was organizing was organizing a walkout for you know the whole dave chappelle shit and that person got fired yeah for organizing a walkout it's like the people trying to like <sighs> defend or the people that are getting attacked are also the ones that then get punished for that thing it's yeah yep. very fucked up very very fucked up the people that get punished in a sexy way are those that join our <laughs> patreon <laughs> I would like to thank the following members. Aaron Noble. Hello, Aaron Noble. Um, Alec with a C. I had a friend named Alec with a C in high school or in elementary or something. That's the gay spelling, right? Just ask Alec Baldwin. Okay. Uh, and uh, Jonathan Montanez. 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 There's no accent, so it has to be Montanez. Anyway. No, no Enye? No Enye. At least I copied and pasted, though, so I don't know. Am I sorry if you're... Um, <laughs> um, it, we are now... Hey. Hey. Hey, Mike. Hey, Kyle. 
we're caught up on Patreon names. Yeah. If you have a name. So butch. If you have a Coach name. Mass. Hold on. Changing my straightest. If you have a name and have supported us, we have now said it. And if we haven't, let us know some uh, on message us because I think I think we're through everyone. Anyway, um, anyone who supports us, we say your name as a thank you. And you get lots of other stuff and new announcements about new Patreon benefits coming shortly. So stay tuned yeah <laughs> stay Very dialed in to your radios <laughs> um and if you want to support us go to patreon.com slash gayish podcast and you can yeah. see some of the updates hey kyle oh hey mike happy 250th episode happy 250th episode we've been doing ba, 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 ba. this <laughs> 250 episodes i cannot fucking believe it um Oh, before we hop too far into it, I want to let everybody know that we are accepting uh, participation. I screwed this up. It has our phone number on it. We're probably not checking the phone number. I'm absolutely not okay, checking great. the phone number. Um, <laughs> Facebook Live, if you make uh, comments in the stream, we will try to make Dan pay attention to them. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've, uh, got some, I've got some stuff. Oh. All right, so news reactions. Do we have news reactions? Oh, no. Just or what? What are people general, saying? General fuckatude. Uh, someone, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff, uh, who's uh, I believe they said that this was their first time joining the live stream. Oh, uh, they, welcome! They, I think this is a news reaction. They said, "Who would have thought the fall of civilization would be brought on by a mask and flags?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most. And then Robert Thompson uh, corrected the fall of the USA. Everyone else is doing fine. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Archie Cruiser. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. <laughs> um, unrelated to the news, sure. Uh, Tom Mablaz Law Blog uh, <laughs> said that Ma Johnson looks like she's being held hostage. Yeah, <laughs> wait, she, wait. she's in an undisclosed location. Uh, yeah, she's. Um, <laughs> there is no one standing off screen she is alone and doing this independently of her own volition oh god uh and then also uh karel who uh many of you may know from have a nice gay yeah and and minority 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 Report. report yeah uh uh they uh they following along in uh kyle's footsteps of um altering words Mm. uh they just they just entered Flood, Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flood, Texas. Oh, <laughs> and Tom just said, Patty, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, so for our, uh, for our 250th episode, please uh, do feel, um, fill out the comments there and we'll, we'll try to take a look at it. But uh, every 50 episodes since the very beginning of the show, we just take a break from doing topics and instead focus on doing Q&A. And uh, this year we've been collecting cues so that we can A them, and that's going to be pretty much the rest of the show. So enjoy. But we're also going to make a couple of announcements. We usually yeah. make some sort of announcements, but we're, we're, we're doing some Patreon changes, and we have a contest we're going to tell you all about. It's super exciting. Uh, happy birthday, us. Yeah, and for the Ma, ma bah, fish- bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> producer slash sound effects coordinator, Dan. <laughs> so, uh, Foley artist. Foley artist. Um, uh, for the Ma aficionados, she will be uh, answering some questions a little bit later. So you have yeah. to you have to deal with us to get to her. Right, yeah. <laughs> you have to get through us. <laughs> and then we'll, for Patreon, we're going to do a speed round. We're going to do speed round. Uh, we're going to do fucking, speed. We're going to do speed. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dan's going to answer more questions. So you oh, get. Yeah, yeah. So if for those of you on the live stream, you can just hang out and get a little sneak peek of what our Patreon is yeah. usually like. Yeah. Hey, but what? Oh, what? Hey, hey, Cal. Oh, hey, Mike. Um. Uh. Uh, I'm Dom topping the show, and I'm going first. We haven't even done a question, Mike. What? I what? know what's happening. I know. I got you guys. I got you guys some stuff. Oh, God oh. Damn it. should yeah. I open it now? Yeah, sure. This I'll is it now. It was my job. I didn't get you anything. This is uh, heavy. <laughs> it's oh, it's fine. Oh, it's it's fine. Oh, mine is a little cute little drawing of like wine and wine bottles and wine glasses. And mine's a hummingbird. With rhinestones. Yeah. Yay. And it says, should I, should I read this? It's, yeah, okay. it's appropriate. K- Kyle, happy 250. I'm still glad we're uh, doing this, and I'm proud of where we are. We are the product, and without you, none of this crazy, amazing, bumpy, queer ass, important, and meaningful ride would be possible. Thank you, but really love Mike. 
quote and then in police today just run out of time and or ideas for a gift and just throw money at the problem you're goddamn right i did boy an open air <laughs> throw, envelope throw money at whatever you want that's yeah and in this uh, heavy envelope yep oh yep. my god do i need yep. to open my envelope simultaneously no it's, yeah it's fine it's yeah. fine yeah and uh, in my envelope <laughs> It's a bunch of scratch off yeah, tickets. Yeah, fifty episodes, fifty bucks worth of scratchers. Are you serious? Shit, right? <laughs> I would like to declare here and now: if I win anything, it is mine. Yeah, sure. I'm not sharing. <laughs> I will leave you in a second if I get rich. Join Absolutely. our Patreon. <laughs> and I would like to say, if I win. Uh, you still have to pay me for the work. Sure, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We'll, we'll review the contract to see what the details state about lottery winnings and if they belong to us or you. <laughs> uh, so my card says, fucking Dan, thank you for another 50 episodes. And then two exclamation points, which I think the sound of is... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> um, it hardly seems possible you've been with us 150 episodes deep now. But mm. here we are. Real Thank deep. you so much for the work you put in for us and all the myriad ways you make the show better. Myriad, one of my favorite words because it's from Heather's. Oh. Um, <laughs> we wouldn't have the show and the community without you. Not in the same way anyway. Happy 250. <laughs> <laughs> Love Mike. It's written in there exactly yeah. like that. That's weird. <laughs> yep. It's hard to spell. It's, it's, that seems very hard to spell. Spell. <laughs> Uh, let's do a question. Yeah, let's, let's, do, first let's question do a question. Okay. Get, thank you, Mike. That's very yes. sweet. Yes. Uh, I'm going to kick off with a very, a very heavy one. I just feel oh, like great. we're like sure. jerking ourselves off right now. So we yeah. Can yeah, jerk off with you. Enjoy, everybody. It's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first question comes from uh, a longtime listener, often caller. Mm-hmm. Um, is it you? <laughs> and Patreon. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, a, oh. okay. uh, who shares a love of all things spooky mm-hmm. with me. Uh, and uh, I'm going to read a little bit of the intro to the question. This question may seem like I'm being silly, and I guess it's uh, the prerogative. I can't say that word. It's my prerogative. Okay. Uh, of the crew to be <laughs> You're saying the Britney Spears version, right? The, yeah, your answer is yes. The look on Dan's face says yes. <laughs> if, now yes if you don't have the video. I didn't even know she did a version of it. I didn't know anyone else did a video. Well, let's add both versions <laughs> no. to Spotify. No. Okay, keep reading, keep reading, All keep right. reading. But it would be, I would genuinely, damn it. I would genuinely like to hear you all give it your best shot at an answer. What is the meaning of life? If oh. you don't believe there's a greater external meaning, then what is the meaning of life to each of you? Hmm. Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Um. What is the meaning of life? Uh, I think I, I'm a humanist at heart. I think is do the most good for the most people that you can, and hurt the fewest people that you can, and generally be a positive force in the universe as much as you can, and um, do the best you can with what you have. I guess I don't know. That's kind of where I, where I'm at, man. I should have gone first, so I sound like the smart <laughs> one. Yeah, I don't. I'm very atheist. Don't believe um, there's anything greater up there. I think we try to bring meaning to life through a lot of different ways because it's if you think about it too hard, it all is overwhelming and scary and se- can seem meaningless. So I think that's where religion comes from. So I identify with that need for hoping there's something more and since i have not seen literally any evidence of that existing i'm pretty atheist so yeah it, same thing of like well everyone's just doing you know doing our own shit through life until we die so might as well make it the best for everyone as much as possible so yeah. helping both trying to make yourself happy that sounded like jerking off i mean do that if that makes that that can help too <laughs> it's jerking off. sorry jerking off jerk New off answer, everyone just jerking <laughs> it's like self-pleasure non-stop masturbation <laughs> non-stop genital pleasure is my is the meaning of life in my mind and jerk other people off too you know bring pre- pleasure to other people that want it <laughs> yep yep for reals okay. absolutely uh my new god is orgasms dan do you have an answer it's very in line with your guys's um oh. yeah yeah i'm i similarly uh atheist and and humanist and secular buddhist and like you know the the meaning of life to me is to enjoy it uh to learn 
and to share what I learn with other people and mm. hopefully bring joy to other people, specifically dom tops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> bring joy to as many dom tops as I can. <laughs> Great. Yeah. It's been inside you all along. <laughs> Somebody has. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's see. Let's... Yeah. What does mom? What does mom got to say? Do I need to push a button to make my talk? Um, or do you? We can ask mom. Okay. Hey, go for it. Can people hear? I think so. Yeah. Well, you, you spelled <laughs> wine wrong. So, uh, life is about drinking wine. No, um, life is like a corn dog. I don't know why it just is. So. There we go. Okay, great. There you go. <laughs> life is like a corn dog. <sighs> All right, let's get a little lighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will ask Mike a oh. targeted at Mike question. Okay. Ooh. Bring it. Um, yeah. Uh, this comes from. God, how many crushes on how many listeners do I have? Uh, this comes from Stuart Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, after after that introduction, uh, Mike, are you a locker n- room and never nude, uh, a towel unless showering, or let it all be free? I am a towel unless showering. Um, you know, for the longest time, I I was a locker room never nude. It even got me in trouble, like in junior high, and so much of that is just like gay kid not being able to handle being around n- naked people um and like internalized homophobia blah 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 um and uh i'm i'm a fairly modest person and um i'm not against like getting ready at the gym like i used to at microsoft I used to go to the gym at like lunch and then and then shower up and 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 head back to work so um but yeah you know Hide my bits and pieces. How did you get in trouble for not being a never nude in school? I was, I was, I was skipping gym so that I didn't have to be in the locker room. Mm. And um, they don't teachers don't like it when you skip classes. Mm-mm. They don't, they don't dig that anyway. Oh, it's kind of the purpose of them being there. Yeah. <laughs> Ta da! All right, one for Kyle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I won't, uh, yeah, I won't do that to you. Uh, this is also from Stuart. Uh, if you could destroy one item of Mike's clothing and then replace it with something (laughs) else, what would it be? (sighs) (laughs) There's absolutely nothing I would destroy of Mike's. Everything he wears looks perfect. Wow. Except, except sometimes you wear your director's newsboy hat a little bit too much, but that's yeah. <laughs> what would you replace it with? Um, uh, a f- f- uh, fedora. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, it's so funny. It like I legit have never worn a hat in my whole life until going to Ireland for Kelly and Jeremy's wedding. And I found that green hat. That's roughly the same style as that one that you're mm-hmm. talking about. And then I lost it. And then, uh, the roommate replaced it. But the whole thing is like, I just never liked the way that I looked wearing hats. So then I way overdid it when I found one. Like <laughs> it's, it's both. Uh, there are two uses. One of which I approve, uh, like, Mike is hung over and yeah. just like you're what you wear your glasses and that hat and yeah. like whatever you were wearing last night or yeah. Yeah. what back when we could and were doing Shakespeare like recording and you were directing it you would wear that and it I like the second one because it was like although a little on the nose like director look it was very directory <laughs> yeah yeah Woo! absolutely um but you know what I will say yeah. I think think i have an idea of other clothes i would have you wear okay if you could sure all right oh <laughs> did you plan this segue no, no excellent excellent what could it be what could it be what could it be Ugh. oh oh god excuse me <laughs> that's i'm normally uh-huh. muted <laughs> thanks kyle yeah oh it says daddy <laughs> Oh, yay. Yeah. That's so good. Daddy. 
there uh, embrace I, it mike embrace i think it. yeah okay. i think you've been working on embracing it and i just wanted to give you a little push and you could just literally like put it out there by telling everyone on a shirt thank you that's very very sweet i was just telling somebody at brunch this morning that i needed a t-shirt that says daddy size queen or size queen daddy but we can like, get a permanent marker and write that in the little underline this, I'll, the size I should, queen. I'll start with daddy first okay we'll see, see, how, that see how that goes <laughs> Thank you. That's very, very sweet. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. Oh. So uh, I, I believe this is a segue. Um, you mentioned your trip to Ireland. Yeah, I'm sure. At, at, during which you met um, handsome giant Fraser. Fraser, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fraser? Yeah. Fraser, not Fraser. Yeah. No. Not a zhush. Fraser. Fraser. Mm-hmm. Um, and Fraser has a, has a boyfriend. Yep, true story. And their name is... Hmm? <laughs> Is it Lewis? Yes, yeah, Lewis. Okay, good. I didn't fuck this up. All right, so Lewis oh, asked us oh, some oh, questions. Oh, because his Facebook name isn't his name. Oh, God. Yeah, Lewis. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just... I just I was like, I just, there's it's... multiple L names that <laughs> right, wrote in, and I can't remember who was who. Got it. That's where... And the other one sounded vaguely Gaelic. Um, so they wrote in and had a similar question to also... Uh, uh, fuck. Where did they go? Sorry, there's so many pages. For, as Joe, Joe in Dallas. Oh. They both had a very similar question of, um, is there a topic that you felt it was too controversial, too taboo, or a topic you just would never do on the show? There's, um, most of the time, we've said this, like, if there's a topic that makes us uncomfortable, um, and one of us does, like, you know, a, fa- a little face, then... It, it either we recognize that in ourselves and like ah shit maybe we need to do that or the other person will be like wait you seem uncomfortable does that mean we should do it anyway and i think we've gotten good at figuring those out and embracing those and and i think it started with depression um that was i think the first one that i was like this makes me extremely uncomfortable because yeah. i never talked about shit like it's so weird now because when we started this i had told you about my depression and did not talk about it yeah, and like yeah, yeah. i in spite of how I have sounded, like I don't, I have, have not talked about things very openly, and this podcast has completely changed that. So, I think we do a good job of that. There's at least one topic that I've explicitly told you, like we are not talking about, and I won't tell you what that is because it's yeah. personal and difficult. Um, yeah. So, other than that, I don't know that there's anything too controversial. Um, when we were like talking about doing an episode about black lives matter that was like yeah we did a lot of should thinking should we even do this or should you know like um yeah the, and we ended up with gay white privilege was the episode yes. that we did yeah um, yeah we, we did a lot of talking about that yeah a lot of talking about that i'm trying to think of yeah i don't know any has it is there anything else we've like explicitly avoided talking about i don't think so i mean i i, I think i have no interest in doing an episode about scat like, um, I, I think that that's, um, next time you're out on vacation, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, but that's, but I, I think maybe it, I don't know. I remember when we first started, um, I, uh, initially wanted to like leave politics completely out of this oh, yeah. and yeah. the, um, so like that, I mean, <laughs> and that was yet a you long... started a podcast with me <laughs> I, I, and in doing that ed- editing, sometimes I would cut some yeah. of that shit. And it, that was a long, long time ago. So that was like at the very beginning of first 20 or something episodes until, and that's something that I've like learned or evolved on a, or come to understand is like the hope was talking about gay stereotypes and people that don't fit the mold or don't feel like they fit in. Yeah people with right leaning views or Republicans like that, that that's part of the, uh, this audience that that's a potential group of people that feel outcasts and wanted to be able to speak to them because they're also gay, queer humans that exist in the world. Um, and I think that very much changed as I both got older, learned more. And, um, as the right wing became so outlandishly anti Evil gay. fuck faces. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> that's the shit I would have cut before, but like, it's it's. Their bullshit is bullshit, Kyle. Uh, yeah, it 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 at least became to apparent to me that it's like, but I don't know. You just have to like you just ha- avoiding it is only helping um, them. Yep. 
they, uh, and, and we t- we talk a lot about the fact that uh, you know, such as it is, we have a platform, and we really we do want to use that platform, in whatever way we can, to make the world better, and that unfortunately includes politics and political discussions. Mm-hmm. But um, I like where we've landed. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a political show, but it's a yeah. political show. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, like being gay, anything you do is political. So like even just talking about lives of queer people like I, I see something we commonly get is just like i don't have any access to queer lgbt culture so yeah. it's nice to be able to listen and hear about like talking about the day-to-day lives of like anyone who does this there's so many podcasts out there pride 48 check that out it's ton of awesome podcasts like anyone talking about the life of a queer person yeah it, like that is a political act unfortunate it's not <laughs> i wish it wasn't i wish no one gave a shit and we could just be who we are but like that's a political act to be yourself yep absolutely so yeah you know. for sure Maybe uh, how's, the, how's the chat room doing, Dan? Oh, s- stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, while you look yeah. at that, should I make a? Should we make some announcement? An announcement? Sure. Um. Oh. What? Sorry, someone someone said you should never do topics you know you clearly know nothing about. Cars, for instance. <laughs> oh, yeah. We get here. Okay. No, that's because uh, sometimes we get comments of like. Hello, I'm a car expert. I've been ranked number one in cars by Cars Magazine. Yeah, like, and yeah. it's uh, you know, if you love a topic super much, like fashion hey, comes to mind is one that we sure. just totally fucking tubed. But, well, uh, but but here's the thing: like the fact that we don't know about it, fashion is a great example. The fact that we are gay and don't know about fashion, that's a little bit of the point. Like, yeah. to uh, to like. Here's what we know about fashion. There are probably other people that don't know anything or give a shit about fashion. Yep. And they often hear so many gay people talk about how they love fashion and how well-dressed they are. That like That's, that's already out there in the universe. Yep. I don't feel the need to describe how good gay men are at fashion anymore. Like That's not interesting or unique. To say, here, we suck at fashion. Let me talk about it. Yeah. Of course, people that are good at fashion and we like use the wrong designers like yeah, Dolce yeah. and Esbon or I don't know, whatever they're <laughs> called. Like, I don't know. It, it's it's more some people are like angry. They like, what? Why didn't you talk about this thing? Or why didn't you? And I, I've kind of learned to appreciate that if someone listens to it and wanted either more or wanted a different topic, that meant that they were engaged with the subject. So yeah. I'm trying to like for myself, Lauren, I can't I'm, I'm not going to make everyone happy. Um and no matter how many hands I have, and I, you know, and and someone that listens and cares enough to write in, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I've had to learn that like, it's okay that people had expectations about the episode based on the topic. Yeah, and we didn't meet those expectations. Yeah, yeah, because we went a different direction. Yeah, and that's okay. And there's there's sometimes uh, one that um, uh, comes to mind of. Uh, when we had uh, Sarah Ray on from Sarah yeah. Talk, yeah. S- Sarah Talk yeah. of the yeah. Sarah Talk Miss podcast, Miss Talk, yeah. Ms. Talk <laughs> if you're nasty, um, she was on and she answered just any question. She agreed any questions you have about being trans, I will answer. So I I really appreciated that yeah. she did that. I think that's really useful because so many people are like. Oh, I can't, you know, I know I can't ask. I'm not going to walk up to a trans person and ask, like, tell me about your genitals or where you're at. Like, <laughs> yeah, but people yeah, want, if there's yeah, a natural, yeah. like, people have interest and want to know these things. And she agreed to do that. Also, someone wrote in and said, you know, that was extremely focused on trans women. And there's more to trans than just trans women. And that's one of those times where, like, I still think the episode was good. The topic was good. And it was important. Also, we could have said up front. This episode is about is focusing on a trans woman's experience. Yeah. There's lots, you know, there, there's some things that help of like, here's the context of exactly what we're doing in this episode. And it's not every episode that I feel the need to do that. But big ones like that, yeah. I think, are And we debated helpful. a lot, like, what should the title of that episode be? Like, yeah. Should it be trans women? Should it be a trans woman? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. we decided to land on you know, trans. Just keep it tight. And yeah. we will probably do a trans, too, at some point. And yeah. if, if there's a trans man out there or someone who's non-binary maybe um it would be great to kind of repeat that yeah. ama model yeah um with that yeah yep. yeah also everyone who's like angry we didn't talk about a thing is just giving us more episode content ideas yeah. so that's helpful. <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah um some other things that, that popped up in the chat uh Stuart, uh mentioned that the meaning of life is 42 oh, of course it is. oh right right right, right, yeah. right, right, right. yeah um and also was surprised i wasn't crying after reading the card mm-hmm. um <laughs> and vicky uh asked uh 
uh, comment on the great t-shirts we're all wearing and where did we get them? <laughs> okay, mine is a Nutella t-shirt. Mike gave me this t-shirt and also like basically the identical print uh, <laughs> pullover hoodie, which I've only done it a couple times, but is the most amazing joke of wearing a Nutella hoodie, taking it off and having a, like the okay. exact same T-shirt underneath. It's <laughs> hilarious. Anyway, so this is from Mike. Uh, just that got... should be your first tattoo. I, oh wow, so Nutella! Get, and then so you, you take, take out the, the T-shirt and that still oh! says Nutella. Oh! <laughs> 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 okay, here's what I'm worried about tattoos. Anything I get, it's going to be like, Nutella comes out in support of Nazis. You're going to be like, ah, right. fuck. Yeah, I, th true. This is yeah. forever now. Yeah. But Hazelnuts are killing the rainforest. Oh, well, <laughs> hazelnuts are definitely killing. They are, like... but I did a, well, palm oil, which yeah. is in Nutella. Um, but I did an entire report for pastry school on Nutella and the sources that they use. And they it's super super ethical and green and oh. like they put a lot of effort in gotcha tattoo forthcoming see a future episode <laughs> have we done tattoos uh did we do tattoos we haven't done tattoos yet that's no we, we did tattoos that's an, okay yeah, see this is what happens after 250 episodes we don't fucking remember this that's is why, why i have a wiki yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what well, uh your shirt on oh, my shirt oh yeah we did two t tattoos my, in my shirt in the says... last 50 episodes oh, great. <laughs> my, my shirt says relief pitcher and it's got a baseball and a pitcher of beer which i think is hilarious because this is now a triple entendre um pitcher of beer pitch a baseball and top the shit out of a little twink so. what would a relief <laughs> pitcher be though that's that's like I'm I'm tired of railing this twink, dude. And then you high five, and then you switch. Mm, pump and dump. When two tops high five while they're fucking someone. <laughs> best part of porn. Where yeah, it's the closest I'll ever get to France. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Yeah, what about you, Dan? <laughs> Where did you get that shirt? Oh, uh, just online. Just online. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I want a funny, I want a funny T-shirt. So, and I, in fact, I think I think I googled for funny gay T-shirt, and this came up. <laughs> Great. I'm trying to see if there's like a oh. brand label. Sorry, as I grope you. That's fine. It says life that's... is good inside Mike's shirt. I hmm. don't know. I don't know if that's the brand or what life is that. good inside or all of just... my clothes. <laughs> 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 what about you, fucking Dan? My shirt uh, uh, is a stretch goal shirt that I designed based on something that came up in an episode. It's the words stretch goals inside the shape of a, um, stretched into the shape of a, a butt plug. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's available at gayishpodcast.com slash merch. Yeah. You can get your very own. And in various, I think, colors. Different colors, colors. Yeah. 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 You can also get it on a mug, I think. And a sticker. And a sticker. Wow. Yeah. Um, speaking of promoting ourselves, yeah, uh, sure. is it time for an announcement? Yeah, let's do an announcement. Sure. Okay, one of our biggest uh, updates, we're updating Patreon. We're updating um, Patreon. Adding a new level, adding some new benefits. And one of our Patreon supporters like messaged me to make sure we weren't going to fuck it up. <laughs> so I'm very, oh, really? I'm very excited. Well, that we weren't going to fuck Patreon up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we let it slip that we were making Patreon adjustments. Oh. And then th they were like, you better not fuck this oh, up. Oh, well. Not really. It was Here we go. It let very, it, it let us sweet. know. <laughs> I'm to blame. This, yeah. this is my, um, part of my job was to, to, to look at the levels and make suggestions yeah and and something you found is that and we've we've heard on our uh patreon like calls is that people want uh easier access to video stuff so yeah. um what we are doing is we are changing uh the or reducing the level you need to join in order to get access to our video uh, content so we added a new ten dollar a month level five dollar a month you get bonus audio um, and at $10 a month, that's a brand new level where you get bonus video. So anytime yeah. we record the video version of something, we will post that to uh, the Patreon feed. Uh, it's going to be called I Like to Watch Her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you like to watch, if you, like Mike, are a bit of a voyeur and want to watch us more, uh, yeah, that's $10 a month. Um, it's available right now if you go to the Patreon uh, site patreon.com slash gayish podcast in the future what we'll add also you'll get access to the full version of the theme song you wrote like a full song that yeah. just i don't think anyone has ever heard but us i don't think it, i've ever played it or the, anything you know there's we the very first time yeah. it, the whole thing played i did i put in or did you or whoever edited put in the thing? and huh, then i I, I edited a patreon episode monthly episode and mm -hmm. i put the second verse as the theme instead of the first verse but oh. then that didn't stick so well you had this idea of like changing out every week but like that's a lot of like maybe not every week but i was like like i want to i want to write more verses okay. and put more like yeah. pairings together but yeah. um 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but yeah. the anyway. full full version will be available for ten dollars and up. Um, also, just a couple other things: the twenty five dollars and up. Um, what we've added now is access to a 10% discount code uh, for any merch. So you'll automatically get that if you sign up for that. That's something we saw like a ton of different podcasts um, had like a discount code of certain like tier. So uh, yeah. kind of on par with, with other podcasts we've seen now. Um, yeah, and- so you don't have to be at the $25 level for video anymore. We're giving it to you at the $10 level. Much more accessible. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, and there's some really fun stuff in that. Yeah, that we're proud of. Yeah. Um, and something that we've been doing for a little bit, but just this is a good time to call it out, is if you're a gap bridge or if, if you're at the $50 a month and up, not only do you get to come up with your own episode topic, which we have some episode topics from, coming up that I'm excited about, yeah. but um, you also every month get to vote on, you know, Dan, Mike, and I each put in a topic and you all get to vote which one of us wins and which topic we cover. Yeah. But there are a smaller number of people. So it's it so has, stressful, too. Uh, not for well, well when y'all vote wrong it's stressful but um uh it's it's a you know a smaller number of people and it has come back tied before so dan started doing this thing where anyone five dollars and up can vote on this i call it an advisory vote <laughs> like yeah. it's it if there's a tiebreaker and we see that people have voted for one we will use that um to help break the tie so anyone five dollars and up will get to vote every month in that tiebreaker vote also it's very helpful to know like if a ton of people in a tiebreaker thing vote for something like that's helpful to like yeah. let us know that we should cover that anyway yeah that's yeah. part of the advisory yeah, purpose like of necrophilia it, but... yeah <laughs> It's you've all so been poorly you've bo- all those been, of you who voted for it i know who you are and thank you you've been begging for necrophilia so, <laughs> so um if you <laughs> please nobody take that sound clip. <laughs> uh, meh, whatever um so yeah support us if you don't know that's where we get most of our revenue to help support paying dan getting the equipment that you see uh, like having this studio set up uh traveling for tours and stuff like there that that helps us a lot and i would that's our time everybody the coffee's done <laughs> <laughs> um uh i will i will say that also i took a month off um and mike and dan as you know did awesome at helping you know make sure that the show keeps happening and have amazing episodes every week still come out the one of the challenges is that i've still been even though I've been joining every week, I've been holding back on other areas to try to like keep, you know, I don't know, keep sanity or whatever. And one of the ways that I've had to like kind of pull back is on um, sponsors like advertisers. So um, it's really helpful to have people that support so that if I don't have like the capacity to do other things like including advertising um, or finding new advertisers that, you know, they're still people that support us other ways so yeah. thank you thank you for that yeah for real question yeah let's do a question what did each of you want to be when you grow up and why <laughs> this comes from charlie porter uh i remember pretty distinctly in probably sixth or seventh grade having to write a report about what do you want to do when you grow up and my answer at the time anyway was an airline pilot i wanted to go all over the place see the world Get the fuck out of Zilla fucking Washington. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So at least at some phase of my life, that's what. I also had, you know, ideas about, I don't know, being uh, a science guy or a math guy, mm. you know, professor type, that kind of shit. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you figured out the whole number pyramid thing you explained one time on an episode. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I talked about that on an episode? Mm-hmm. Fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the shit you guys listen to. <laughs> um, when I was growing up, I... Okay, I will tell you two things. One is I remember watching an episode of Married with Children in my parents' room when I could like watch TV and no one else was there. And there was an episode with this uh, dude stripper on it. And uh-huh. I was like so intrigued by that. And in my, I remember sitting there thinking, I want to be a stripper. And I was like... <laughs> I, And then it was something I knew, like, I bet when I get older, I won't want but i like remember you want to be a stripper Um, and like i was like very determined to remember i want wanted to be a stripper in retrospect 
probably I was just like, that dude's hot. Right. I yeah. want that. Like, <laughs> how can I get close to that? Um, the other thing I remember. I don't want to fuck him. I want to be him. Yeah, that's a I lie. just I want to dance on a, a pole. <laughs> Shirtless. That's fine. Um, the, uh, the other thing I had this dream of, I wanted to write a book. I was like very influenced by Will Smith. <laughs> Who, whom among us was not inspired by Will Smith in the 90s or whatever. Um, I wanted to write a book make a movie based on that book and be the lead actor and then release an album for the movie. Wow. Ba- like from that movie. Yeah. Wow. You, you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you wanted to got right. Yeah. yeah you wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> one, one project he got done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also want to be like a vet or other, other things, but a those vet? are less exciting. Yeah. Dan, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I wanted to be a zookeeper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah from the time I was, I, I don't know that uh, an artist that was maybe the first thing I thought like and, and like a zookeeper and I went I when I went to high school I like I'm like I'm gonna take biology my freshman year even though you're supposed to take it later I like took anatomy in high school I like went off to college and got my zoology degree <laughs> and then worked at an art supply store and then at a tech firm and now at a podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah someday you'll be a boo keeper <laughs> oh god it's october it is october it's spooky uh oh here's a spookyish question <laughs> that comes from daniele okay on um in tomorrowland <laughs> uh who, buongiorno who is yeah who is your podcast dream guest dead or alive mm. uh, definitely dead because that'd be more fun <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I mean we've we've talked about uh, trying to book Dan Savage uh, a couple of times and that would be nice. I um and that's mostly just like a, a logical next step or a, mm. in the progression or whatever. Like dream big, dream like whoever who would you want? It would be if if we could book Oprah, that I would shit my pants. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> don't do it while she's there like you know do it before right yeah or, yeah yeah yeah. Or, you know, yeah i guess you do you for the scat episode <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for for big fatty's shark week yeah, right. <laughs> um i've been thinking a lot about kathy griffin lately and oh, um like you do like i do I, some, I mean she's like been posting about her recovery from uh getting like a third or two-thirds of one of her lungs removed like she yeah and she's like got blackballed from the um from hollywood for a little bit uh, but she uh, like thinking back on the gay media i uh took in as a kid like she was one of the first thing i remember going to college and watching her stand-up specials on bravo and she was one Mm -hmm. of the first like earliest like just explicitly like i'm going to talk a lot about gay shit and and that influenced me a whole lot and it's interesting i I, like have this thing of like we talk a lot about like i want to talk to and and promote queer artists and, and icons because we don't do that enough but also like kathy griffin was so personally influential to me because queer people couldn't be that out or that public Mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, it mm so i don't know it's one of those weird like i feel a little bit guilty but it's just but also i should just like you know it's what i want it's what it's what is important to me so i should just be okay with that so yeah yeah kathy griffin kathy griffin and oprah and oprah and lil nas x Oh, yeah. <laughs> that could have been like just assumed based on how often how often you talk about him. Yeah. That boy hot. Indeed. Uh let's see what what next? How about how about a quick one? <gasps> Boxers okay. or briefs? And is there any interesting or funny reason why? Uh boxer cuz my dick is huge. No, um I got to uh, give it breathing <laughs> room. <laughs> this one comes from Eduardo from South Texas. Okay. Hey, Eduardo. Thanks for the question. Um, I tend to wear briefs these days, and I definitely went through like a straight guy boxer briefs phase. Mm. I still own a few pair of those, um, which I graduated to from like boxers and boxers only in college because I was straight then. Mm-hmm. Um, a funny, there's no like real funny reason why. I mean, the reason, well, okay, the, the reason that I wear briefs now really is just because like after coming out, like one of the awesome things about being gay is you get to be into underwear. Yeah. And um, so I, I ordered a bunch of gay ass underwear and it's great. And gay ass underwear is, is briefs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I had the same thing. I, uh, yeah. Like growing up, switched over to boxers. Cause like, that's what 
that's what he did um, yep. like boxer boxers like the loose like yeah. yep like yeah and it's in retrospect it's really it's just annoying it's like wearing shorts underneath that can like have they their own yeah they like stuff, yeah. have their own opinions about where to be <laughs> on their body and you're like i didn't want you there but it is it doesn't care yeah and then so i moved i remember watching um christian on uh nip tuck uh and he always had like these black uh, briefs that were like super hot he like his entire apartment was like black and and like modern and cool and hip and whenever he took off his clothes to like fuck some chick he had on these black underwear that i was like ah, i want sexy black underwear <laughs> so i started doing that and then yeah also because i'm gay i get to wear cute adorable underwear and so i wear um like different colors and patterns and shit now yeah. Reynolds ate one of my favorite pairs of two exist underwear that was uh, little skulls on it. Mm-hmm. <gasps> it looked like that. Wow. I bought these. These are the trunk version of them, and I bought them because we we were at Carly's. That was an, I think it was the night that I came over for D and D because I was working on that play and I needed to like sit in on a D and D. Anyway, mm. when we were loading the D and D stuff into and out of Mike's car i think you bent over and i saw like your underwear and i'm like oh my god where did you get those How, where <laughs> oh my god uh, <laughs> yeah so, yeah, yeah. Re- reynolds eats socks and underwear he just likes that stink i guess yeah. and so he you know <laughs> he's such a good dog overall but so that's like his one fault that i just you know i'll, I'll be like oh no he ate the-. and i'll just be like you know it's fine trash and so yeah i don't have those anymore but mm-hmm. rowdy just buries my socks and underwear in the yard oh, so you can find okay so yeah then... i find them and they're just like filthy and have to yeah. mm, you love it <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he does it with all his toys too so I, I give him toys periodically just to keep him busy <laughs> he comes back in with his little dirty nose mm-hmm. all right my fucking neighbor's dog i swear to god if you guys can hear that i'm pissed off if you can't then great i'll oh, be over it it's awful but like it just it just I didn't hear it forever for the longest time, and I don't remember ever hearing it when it was a baby, like a puppy. Mm. But now that the pandemic is over and people are leaving their apartment, mm. the dog freaks out and this just barks, just fucking barks, and it's the I'm going to kill my neighbor's dog. And my dog is here. He's very quiet. He's just laying down there. Yeah. Well, did you hear us talking about you eating mm-hmm. underwear? I'm not mad. I love you. Um, another question? Yeah, let's do another question. Sure. Yeah. Here's a, here's a heavier one. This no. comes from Z Griffler. Okay. Uh, what personal views or beliefs of yours do you think most dramatically shifted in the course of making gayish? They've listened to every episode, came out a few times in the course of listening, and they know uh, they're probably not the only person who has changed or updated views of self and community throughout that time listening. <sighs> I mean, one of, the, one of the things that the show taught me, and, and specifically Kyle, it was mostly you and your influence, is that, that uh, jokes about penis size that are racially based are not okay. Mm-hmm. That was something that I would just casually throw out um, pretty regularly that um, this whole process has, has put a stop to. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what, what uh, especially like if someone out there doesn't understand or makes those jokes, like what did you learn that changed that? Well, um, so... so one okay so so one thing is that like black guys have giant dicks and making a joke about that is first of all it's not always true right and so now if you are a a black guy and you don't have a giant dick what a crazy terrible like experience that Mm. could be right because you you don't you don't you don't fit this supposedly universal stereotype and anyway it's that's just problematic and and the other thing is like race uh, like just don't joke about race mm. like it's not it's not it's not funny and it's not cool anymore like <laughs> and just don't do it i don't know is that what you're asking i don't know what yeah, you're yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah um mine i mentioned a few things that have changed i've, I've definitely like gone even left or like left I feel like I was more like center politically and like um, but one thing that I think learning more specifically about Stonewall helped kind of open up a lot more like understanding viewpoints and I think it's easy to look back on things that have happened in the past and I idealize them or like create some version that like you know I, I 
I even remember saying back when we first talked about Stonewall of like, oh, I don't like violence. And it's like the idea that you can peacefully neutrally. And I still don't, but like the idea that you can just peacefully fight within the system to change right. it after you've been shit on over and over and over, like a pride flag that gets flushed in the toilet. Like that's yeah. not going to change things. You can try. And, and there are certain things that that's just not going to change. What else do you, what else are you going to do? Like uh, there's you, you are, kind of left with no option. So the more I learned about that, that helped added context to protests, to things that felt violent or too far um, in the past. And also learning that uh, more about like news and um, back during Stonewall, the news stories that came out were often like interviewing police. Mm -hmm. Like it Mm -hmm. was interviewing people on a very specific side and the voice and I think maybe one other like local gay publication was the only one that actually talked to the protesters that were there to get their perspective. And it's crazy how, I mean, it, it's not at all because things repeat. So it was just crazy to me when I learned this, I would read things about the black lives matter protests that happened, you know, starting last year. And, um, so much of them were written based on interviews with police interviews with people that were anyone but the actual protesters themselves so learning that like even the left newspapers are skewed or like looking to for those sources like did you talk to any of the actual protests protesters there or did you just talk to businesses or people that on the right that were viewing this from afar and anything so um kind of learning how skewed our our media is and how sometimes I was going to say violence is needed, but like making a big stir is needed that disrupts what the norms that are technically illegal. You know, it's just vital. Yeah. 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 I used to think you were a closet Republican. So I, well, I was an out Republican, I mean, not, <laughs> but, but not and what, when I was not out <laughs> back in college. So yeah, I think that's why I'm always like, you know, give people like a year after they come out to like acclimate and learn and get adjust because <laughs> I know what it's like to grow up and like I don't know. Yeah, it's just my family was Republican. I I don't know. Yeah, I just had a lot to learn. Yep. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How about this? This one's also from Daniele and it's a quickie. Okay. Um, gayish and Golden Girls. Who is who? Oh. And uh, they said specifically. Who is Blanche? Easy Dan. <laughs> and then Dorothy Rose Sophia. Oh, no. Oh, no, Kyle. <laughs> and you can disagree with I me mean, that I'm the, the Blanche. Um, I mean, I know who you are. Do you know who you are? Am I the Dorothy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. No, why is that bad? <laughs> it's not bad. She's a badass, no-nonsense taken bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and she went from mod right to... <laughs> you had an uh, infamous past career. That, um, you're just like... She's just the rational, logical, and also keeps everyone together in her home. And like her mom like is important to her for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's just everything about her. Yeah. Oh. Does that make Ma Johnson the Sophia? I yeah, see, sure. Yeah. Well, I okay. You let me know what you thought I was because I I couldn't place myself. Um, I th- I think podcast Kyle is a rose, but real mm. life Kyle is more of a Blanche. Mm. Uh, um, I don't mm. know what that leaves for Dan, but I I have to. We just, we have two Blanches, everybody, or something. But. Sophia is kind of a know-it-all too. Yeah. And constantly interrupting. <laughs> tell people they're full of shit. So. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And does tell long winded stories. <laughs> Picture it. <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> twenty twenty. <laughs> I mean uh, try to argue with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you wanna do uh announcement about a contest? Sure, a yeah. A contest. A contest. A contest, you say. A contest. We have a contest. Where'd that cheat sheet go? Are you doing? You saying uh, this? I said a lot about Patreon. You said the you Patreon said stuff. Yeah, we are announcing right now, right here, a new listener contest. So, at the beginning of every episode, you know that Kyle says the podcast that, and then he says something real funny. I say, and no. everyone loves it. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gage, and Kyle says the podcast that. Fill in the blank. So we are looking for silly, random, sexy, or confusing 
uh, openers for Kyle to say at the top of the show. And no, I've never said anything. These are like quotes from songs I've never heard. I've of. never I'm said like, anything confusing. <laughs> Throw that adjective out there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking for your submissions, and we will select the one that we like the best. And we put Kyle, the sub in submission. Kyle will actually use it on the air. But we pretty specifically want you to go to Instagram or Twitter. We are Gayish Podcast on both of those platforms. Follow us. And then in a comment, enter your idea. So, uh, and... Uh, and also tag a friend. And also tag a friend that you in think that would enjoy comment. Gayish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you don't, if it's not in the same comment, you're disqualified. Mm. Yep. You can enter as many times as you want to with different phrases and different friends tagged. So the more friends you have, the more entries you can do. <laughs> um, uh, we will be deduping them, but please don't make it hard on us. Uh, and what you'll win is your phrase will be used in the opening of an upcoming episode by Kyle, and we will mail you a gayish media sticker variety pack. We've got some gayish stickers and have a nice gay stickers from our merch store. We will send some out to you as a big thank you. Uh, the contest is going to run from Monday, October the 18th, so tomorrow if you're on the live stream, through the end of October, and we're going to pick a winner by November 6th and DM you to get your details and, and get the uh, uh, stickers out to you as, as well as your name and pronouns uh, and the fine print entry in the contest by commenting on our social media is a statement of consent for Gayish Media LLC the right to use your entry on the air and um, Kyle's bad memory also means that he might use the ones that don't win and take credit for them anyway <laughs> <laughs> That's our listener contest. <laughs> yeah. So get your get your get your fill in the blanks for the podcast yeah. for that. And I might use your junk. Yep. <laughs> oh goodness. Use that junk. <laughs> tag tag a friend. I'll yep. use your junk. Speaking of junk. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh this one comes from Monty. Okay, Monty. How often do you come across a dick that doesn't fully stand erect? And they don't mean erectile dysfunction. They mean specifically when it gets erect, it it doesn't stand straight. It bends. It has a... a, a... <laughs> no one else could hear that. <laughs> no one else could hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, I mean... I mean, I've I've definitely hooked up with penises that that take a left turn at Albuquerque or whatever, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it's it's, a, it's a, that's a, that's a thing that's a thing that happens yeah, yeah. in the world. Like, yeah. I it's been a while. I, like none of the ones recently I, I can remember like taking a taking a turn. Um, th but there's one guy whose dick bent downward, and I dated him for a little bit. He called it off with me. I would have kept going because not only dick but also he was beautiful but like his dick curved downward which i was like oh this Just fits like perfectly right throat, yeah. my my mouth appreciates like it, it curves <laughs> along with the curves of my body like right down there so i yeah that was <laughs> also i liked him so when he said he didn't want to keep dating it was like that and also like but you're but you're dead <laughs> <laughs> but what about what are you gonna do with your dick now though <laughs> can i have it or can like what stay? yeah can but that was a while ago so not too often i guess yeah yeah um so I looked into this a little bit and just wanted to like share mm. that uh, there is a condition known as Peyronie's, um, which can cause a significant bend. Um, specifically, uh, it is if it bends great. Well, actually, that's oh, I'll save that. Anyway, if there's a significant bend and sometimes that can be caused by this condition, it's a condition caused by the problem with how the body heals after an injury. Um, so and that that injury might not be anything notable, but like. Uh, uh, scar tissue starts to build up and it builds up in excess um, and when that happens uh, with this condition on the penis uh, it can cause the, the the erection then to like take a hard left or, or straight yeah. up or, or, or what not sure. um, and you said that builds up in your ex's ass <laughs> <laughs> also that yeah um apparently about one in ten people with penises have peyronies so it's not huh. uncommon um and uh there's a p genetic predisposition to it and then there has to be some sort of form of or injury i guess um and then uh it also becomes more prevalent after age 40 um and so uh, they specifically said age 40 to 70 i don't know why it would stop 
happening at 70 uh after that just be happy you have a dick like (laughs) it was one of those studies where like (laughs) the age range in the study was this so we can't say anything about people older than that um uh so i just wanted to i'm not a doctor uh so this is all just me pulling information off the internet but um if if you if you're having discomfort because of the the bend in your penis um or it's impeding your your enjoyment of sex Uh, you should talk to a urologist. They're, yeah. they're the person to reach out to. There is a medication out there called Zeaflex. I don't know anything about it, but apparently it treats Peyronie's. <laughs> um, and at least it, it treats Peyronie's f- for people where the, the scar, the bump that they have um, can be felt and that the curve is greater than 30 degrees. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dan's a zoologist, so you know yeah. he he also prescribes ivermectin for everybody with a crooked <laughs> penis. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. So just you know, thought I'd put that out there. Thanks, Dan. Who knew? Yeah. We also got uh, a question in a uh, voicemail or a text. I think it was a voicemail. Oh. Um, and that was, how do you get over a crush? When you find out that the crush, when you when you reveal your crush and they're not interested, how mm. do you how do you let that go? Mm. <sighs> I think murder them in their sleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with Im- invermectin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I will first say like if you tell someone you have a crush on them, whether or not they have them back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's very impressive yeah. and not a lot of people do that and you can spend a lot more time just like spinning on it and you know it, it can consume a lot of you uh by just keeping it quiet so like i think first is like congratulate yourself on telling someone and explaining someone in the gay world especially that's gonna it it may not have worked this time but like that's gonna do you good in the long term because like people just don't do that so like yeah it's it's hard to like especially when you feel shitty to be like it'll be fine in the future so i get that like uh, but like yeah that that's such an impressive uh kind of way to put yourself out there that is like good for you for being able to do that and putting yourself out there and that's a uh impressively vulnerable and beautiful moment that you've put out there regardless of the response. Yep. Yep. Um, I will add that you should feel those feelings that, that oftentimes we ask questions like, how do I move on from dot, dot, dot Mm -hmm. when, when we, there's grief there that needs to be processed. And if you're trying to move on beyond it too quickly, you will fuck yourself up downstream. So Mm -hmm. like it sucks and it hurts, but you need to feel those feelings. You need to, you need to process that. Um, and sometimes that means feeling shitty, but yeah. it's better than bottling it up, moving on too quickly, jumping into the next bed, you know. Um, I mean, jump into the next bed if you want to. Sometimes <laughs> I can help. Don't listen to Mike. <laughs> Process those feelings. Um, and then and then be 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 open to the, the vulnerability to let yourself have those feelings again for someone else because yeah. uh, they clearly aren't for you. And... Um, uh, somebody's out there. Your 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 perfect person is out there. Yeah. I would say, people. or people, They're, well, people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't believe in soulmates. I don't know if we've talked about that mm. too much. There's seven billion people on the planet. Like, there's lots and lots of Disney options. Disney invented that will... soulmates in mm. 1946. Yeah. It's Disney invented soulmates yeah. to sell capitalism. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I will also correct. I will also. S- <laughs> Ma, we can hear Ma Johnson in our ears. You can't hear her. <laughs> so we just get to giggle to ourselves. I will also say something that helped me move on from a couple of exes is that it was thinking about like, I thought this is the only person I want. Like, this is the person I want. It is only them. That's what I want. It's like, what do I really want? I want like, oh, I want a person. I want someone. I want a relationship. I want someone who cares about me, someone to cuddle with, someone to do this and and broadening out like instead of I just want that person to what I really want and it's a person. That helps like take away a little bit of the like it was them and now that it didn't happen there's, there's no one. Um mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and th- that can help like remind you that there are other people out there. Yep. But I think you're right. Like uh, I I feel like I'm doing the thing I hate which is like 
telling people to like, oh, silver lining, your cloud is out there. But like, yeah, it sucks. And tell pe- people around you that like it sucks and you're hurting. And like, if if that means crying over it, great. Take yep. a, you don't need to get over it in a certain amount of time that is pre-prescribed. Like, you know, what? Well, a week for every month or you know whatever shitty rule that people have like feel yeah. it as long or, and as much as you want to and <laughs> that sounded too sexy <laughs> for what i meant but like it sucks and and Carell in the chat room says there's plenty more crooked dicks in the sea you know sometimes you <laughs> move on by getting off <laughs> that's just fine yeah. the relationship anarchy sort of angle on it would be that that like yes this person is not consenting to have that type of relationship with you but maybe they will consent to being your friend mm. yeah. and you can still have them as a significant part of your life and you can go to movies and hang out um just you know just not maybe they're not going to bang you yeah yeah or whatnot or go home for thanksgiving to meet your family or yeah. whatever so well, that was like, very be, specific okay. <laughs> <laughs> be open be open to uh whatever relationship people consent to with you and yeah. i bet you can find someone else that you could print out your crush's picture and paste it on their face while they fuck you <laughs> so you get what you want out of it in a different way <laughs> oh my god um <laughs> yeah sure yeah so, so i could probably make you like some yeah some little masks with eye holes oh, so that they contact can still, dan they he'll can eye contact he'll make you. you a mask of your crust oh my so God. you could put it on your next partner that's a better solution than anything else we've said oh, so absolutely. far amazing <laughs> amazing well uh when we put out the call to ask everybody questions we also asked my mom if she'd be willing to answer some of your questions and she said yes absolutely so we have we have we have with us uh on the show now my mom hi mom Hello. How are you? I'm good. So now everybody. Everybody can hear, can me? hear you. Well, I mean, hopefully. So we I need people... can still say fuckety fuck. Yeah, taco, absolutely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, although the we should ask things... ch- chat room. Can you hear mom? You should be able to hear mom, right? Please, please confirm. Yep. Um, but what I'm going to do is go pee, and you guys can ask her the questions uh, about 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 me that I that I don't want to hear the answers to. You, because you don't want to cry. Well, there's that too. How are you going to get out of here, Mike? I'm going that way. It'll uh, be yeah. fine. Okay. This works. With, like the new the new setup. Hey, hi. Yeah. Hey, hi, everybody. Oh shit. Uh-oh. Are you knocking over shit? It's fine. Oh look at that. Okay. Still or anything. Um, hi, Ma Johnson. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Okay. Really good. Yeah. You're not yep, being yep, held yep, against yep. your will. Correct. Uh, no, if, she, if you she's have got wine, so no, it that does. Yeah, <laughs> wait, fucking day. Did you hear? Did people say they can hear? Are, are we? They do. They do. Okay, yeah. great. They can hear mom. Okay, I know we didn't plan this, but everyone always wants to know. And the, I'll start off with this question: Ma Johnson, how's your vagina? My vagina is fabulous. Is it? Um, yeah, the, the smell's almost gone. Um, the itch is quite uh, faint now. Um, no, um, I is Michael gone? Yes, he's yeah. gone. So I actually got laid <gasps> recently. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Tell us <laughs> by, by, by no. who is this? Someone you've talked about before? A new gentleman or? Uh, yeah, whoever? no, no. It's, well, I don't know if I've ever talked about him, but it's a repeat offender <laughs> from my past. <gasps> so this really young guy. <laughs> I've known him seriously since he was like in high school with Mike. When he's some no, no, he's from he's from down here. Uh, I didn't even know how old he was for like a long time, and he didn't know how old I was, so it was it was great. But now, recently, so over all these years, like twenty years maybe, um, we've you know, are you with somebody? No, yes, blah, blah, you know, yada yada. Well, we're both single now, and um. Just kind of out of the blue, hey, how, you know, how's it going, yaddy yaddy, and I'm like, how's it going? <laughs> what do you got for me? <laughs> um, he's fifty finally. How old are you? And I'm, I'm sixty five. So bam, 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 it was bam, like, get it. it. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> then when he was twenty, whatever, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So yeah. But it was really fun. We had really good conversation, and you had really good 
conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. No, we no we did. We kind of caught up on things, and then and then I said, okay, go the hell home. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Done with you. <laughs> but I did meet this weirdo guy on an uh, airplane recently. <laughs> Holy shit! You- on the way back from Nashville last week, uh, sit next to this guy, and he seemed fairly normal, but he. Uh, we're getting ready to deplane, and he said, "Well, hey, give me your number, and maybe Ooh. we can have a drink or do something." You know, I'm like, "Okay." So his name is Donnie. Guaranteed, he's not listening. And is so he um, may anyway, he may reach out. He may have another bow. Oh no, he has, but oh. he keeps sending me this really nasty stuff, like when. There's a picture of a demon and an angel, and it's like when the demon comes to get your rotten soul and you find out you have a lot in common. Um, <laughs> stuff like uh, pictures of of women holding up dildos like men do with fish in pictures <laughs> with the caption that says, it probably smells the same too. <laughs> this man knew, no, uh, met me, only knows me for half an hour. Um, he is quite scary. Yeah. He said his his tongue is a um, oh I it, it was just like disgusting. Mm. Like no, I'm not going to have any much less a no. He invited me to his room to hot tub. He like, dude, you seem pretty normal. You're a nuclear engineer. You're you work where I know that you are. If you told so, was any of it the truth wow. or was? Maybe he's, like, so intellectual he can't even, like, he has to, like, function on a dumb, demonic level to... Yeah, he said that his tongue was a demon. You, How did you... Did you read that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, run, ma, run. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Carell, Carell put that in um, the chat. But run, ma, I was run. intrigued at first because he seemed, you know, pretty great. He was really good looking, and I know he's at least 60, so I'm like, check the box, check the box, mm-hmm. check the box, you know. But you ain't checking my box because you're too weird. <laughs> Stay out of my mom's happen. box, you oh. weirdo. <laughs> yeah, he keep he keeps asking me, "Hey, where do where's good Italian food? Where's you know?" And I so I tell him, but it's like I don't know if he, I don't know. So uh, this past weekend, an auntie and a and a cousin and our uh, other names like evil evil part of us that jumps out and does stuff. So I'm Peggy is my evil twin. Janet is Jackie. Jackie, blame bad shit on Jackie. Mm. And my cousin Sheila, her name is Sybil. So um, <laughs> throw, throughout the weekend, it was pretty great. And I said, well, does Jackie want to meet weird guy from the plane? <laughs> you know, oh, God. I could hook you up. With just Don't connect him to network. anyone. Don't expand his network of it in any kind. Of he does not deserve that. Oh, my wow. God. All right. Anyway, yeah, pretty sweet. What? Vagina overall is doing pretty Good. Mike's back for that. Good, good news, Mike. Good. Great, great. <laughs> Vagina yeah. overall is good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what other questions have people sent in for Ma Johnson, well, Dan? Besides knowing about her vagina, sure. which is obviously the oh, number on one the... question oh. we get asked about Ma Johnson, uh, we had three people write in with basically the same question. And uh, I'll read the, the wordiest version of it, which comes from Curious in Ontario, Canada. I recently came out at the age of 51, and my parents said they suspected, but were never sure. When I asked at what age they suspected, they couldn't answer. With your superior gaydar, (laughs) Ma Johnson, (laughs) there must have been a time you knew Mike was gay. How, like, how old was he? How did you, what, what, what tipped you off? And I'm going to go pee while you answer. I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you. Think when you hold it, are you thinking of me? <laughs> um, so, well, I think I think that it, um, I I had a, a comparison, a reference, in, in um, my uncle, um, I I didn't have really any anxiety, you know, either way. Um, when Michael got married, it's like, well, maybe I was wrong. This maybe he's bi. La 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 la. You know. I mean, it's none of my business. It's, it's none of my business. I love him regardless. Does doesn't matter, even though you're married to a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> she was too. It is, it is totally fine. So if um, if if when he got married to a woman, that was like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. That means that there were some suspicions there already. So like, do you remember when that started? Like, what what would have caused you to then later be surprised when he married a woman? Well, I just think you know your you know your kid, you know their heart. 
I think I just felt like it was, I, I wasn't shocked. There wasn't anything about it that made me, I just said, he, when he told me, I'm like, everything's going to be, everything's fine. I'm thinking you get to be, you get to be yourself. It's it, it his, his personality, him, his love for me, his, his, anything about him with the words meant nothing. It meant everything and it meant nothing. It meant not one cell of him was any different than it was two seconds ago before I knew he was gay. So can you think of it? I, I, I guess you, you know, I never thought Marty was probably, I mean, you don't know and it's none of your business if they're happy. <laughs> can you think of okay. anything specific Mike did that was like, okay, here's a moment that like maybe, <laughs> you know, like, can you think of anything specific that was like, kind of raised that like, oh, when Mike was a kid? No, I, I think it was just the the Mikey, everything about him could or couldn't, uh, you know, you don't have any criteria. <laughs> you really don't. Um, I just think that I felt somewhere in there that maybe, and I, like I said, I had an uncle that never was overtly, I mean, he was more of a feminine or whatever. It was kind of like the interests that Michael had, but when he was, born you just go just i love you beyond anything um it's not a it's not something you consider or think about or ponder oh i wonder if he's gay I wonder if he's gay I if he's gay so there is no marked absolute time until the words came out of his mouth that i would absolutely know i mean you know very very uh artistic very not redneck ruffy <laughs> Sporty guy. The nachos are ready when the electric fence got plugged in. You know, um, just, there wasn't really one. anything except that his just my connection with him. I think, and it's somewhere in your somewhere you mm. know, or you think you know. Yeah, it turned me like when he married the cunt. Sorry, <laughs> um, that um, that. But there was a reason. And, and you can't you can't uh, un you can't unsee that. <laughs> I think that's interesting because. But no, there wasn't there wasn't really anything. He didn't like start trying on my underwear or anything like that. Like you know <laughs> that so. you know of. <laughs> um, yeah, that I know of. Exactly. That, um, I think that's interesting because I think that so many people, even for gay people, expect like when did at what age did you actually know? And it's it's in looking back, you probably have a. a I have had a different answer than when I actually think about it. It's like, well, I didn't actually know until I came out. Cause I, if I did know for sure, I probably would have come out sooner. Yeah. Like there, there are all mm -hmm. these things that contribute or lead to it that you can identify it. But it's interesting that you have a similar answer of like, there's a lot about him that maybe seemed like, you know, uh, uncle Tommy is that uncle Tommy, yeah. uncle Tommy, but yeah. like, that's yeah. not definitive proof, but it's just like over time, this feeling, I think that's, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. I, I yeah. I'd add that like, when you, um, my, my experience coming out to people, I'll just leave it to my experience. There are the people that said, oh my God, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But then there were the people that would say, I totally knew. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've said, I think even on the show that I don't like that. Yeah. But I think what they're actually saying is not that they knew. It's just that they're not surprised and everything makes sense now. Yeah. 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 Right. Like. It's not that they knew knew, but they like there is an internal sense of you that is affirmed by the realization that you're gay, yeah. and I, I I think that it it I totally knew is just sort of shorthand for that more nuanced feeling. Yeah, I don't I don't think it was that per se. I think it was everything that uniquely was Mikey with just was you didn't didn't matter what that meant ultimately in your bedroom or your preferences. It, it just that's what I mean. I wouldn't have been surprised if, had you not. But when you said it, it's just like, OK, good for you. Mm. You know, good. You can be you. And, and feeling bad about you had to wait yourself. It wasn't my it wasn't my call that I could call it anyway. That's bullshit mm. um, that you were finally able to be your true self, but um, that you had to take so much of your life to do that. Um, and if there was something that I could have done to show new support, but until you really said yes, mm -hmm. nobody else was going to be saying yes for you or, or 
labeling you or telling you that you we thought you're you know why aren't you gay michael because you kind of act like it. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that at all yeah. nothing like that at all yeah. yeah but just um i don't know just kind of didn't matter hmm. just kind of yes okay yep and we're we're really pissed at that young brother. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> it was a friend of yours that said, I'm going to raise my kids uh, gay, and if they figure out something else later, then... <laughs> <laughs> it was that. Was that Utai? I think it was Jesse Tyler Ferguson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, a that's good great. Um, an equally uh, important and serious and heavy comment. You look great, Ma Johnson. <gasps> Thank There's a you. lot of lot of comments in the in the thread of of how how great my Johnson looks. Did, is it a new, hair, ah! the new haircut? Is, is it a new rage. haircut? I was gonna ask. No, I told you I got laid. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a new haircut, and I don't have my glasses on. I have you my contacts. New, on. Have a new haircut. It's probably a little bit getting laid. Your nails look like you you just got them did. Like they look really like just everything about you is looking very good. Okay. You. <laughs> You're welcome. And we're kicked Who off Facebook. Daddy <laughs> beads, hold hold them up. Yeah, no. So what? What was the other yeah, the what, other questions? Uh, we get. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a question from Jeff Embleton. Uh, what do you think mature women can teach gay men about sex with men? Mm. Oh boy. Uh, age has nothing to do with your communication. I I think that experience, yes, it 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 helps you know what you know and or what you like and you don't like. But isn't it all really about experimentation anyway? Regardless of who you're with, isn't that the fun of it? Isn't that um. You're, you're risking, you're always risking rejection or risking, ooh, that's gross. Why'd you do that? What do you, you know? Um, but uh, I don't, I maybe could clue in some people, but I, do, I don't think so. I think it's your own journey. I don't think that anything I, I could say, well, c- because I'm not coming from that direction. I'm coming from being old. And what was the question? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's, no, I, well, that's a great question. Though. I think um, you, you talk about communication and exploration of what you like. And I do think that is, you're right, not connected directly to age, but there's something about it that as you get older and have more experiences, maybe might like might be able to either communicate better or know a little bit more about what you want like how did did how did you learn to communicate what you want or or what what have you yeah what what has age taught you about communication or either like what you like or don't like well i whoa it's a lot from being locked into whole whole different conversation of being married whole different conversation and in the situation i was in um (laughs) later What's that? Said... Spell hole? Did you say spell yes. hole? Mike, oh your son Mike said that. <laughs> okay. Um, I, it, is, it is just being honest. Finding out that really when you say what you want is a very much of a turn on as opposed to and like not contributing to the, the experience or or um, had very being afraid of, of rejection of like, or you know yeah if you like that or you don't just give a nod or say get the fuck <laughs> off of there or whatever <laughs> but um um i think it does give you courage and um the, the fewer rejections that you get the the more you know well i don't know i just i listened to the um snake bite <laughs> So it's all it's all good. It's all good. Snake, snake bite episode. That is the Patreon. You want to swing around segment? on the chandelier with the bottle up your ass and do it. If they don't like it, then don't care. Something that <laughs> makes me think about is like being gay. So you're you're taught to keep so much of yourself from other people that uh, what you're describing, right. saying what you like and don't like, is 
so antithetical to being in the closet. Like we're, we're like yeah. literally hiding it exactly what we like, you know? And so even though you come out, yeah. that is probably still a, or a lot of us probably still have that fear of like, I can't say exactly what I like or what I'm into for fear of rejection of who I am as a person. And so I, I think what you're describing is very useful for younger gay people or people that are just exploring their sexuality is like learning to fight those instincts and actually be direct about I like this and I don't like this and best case scenario yeah. you say what you like and you get it <laughs> like yeah. that's pretty that's pretty fun I, I, I've talked about it before yeah. the okay. I think yeah it's embarrassing I don't know why it would be I mean you're already there naked with whatever going on and you're mm -hmm. embarrassed to say could you do xyz mm -hmm. yeah that just seems yeah, silly. Yeah, like I can breathe really? a whole lot right now. That's very weird. I've never had that experience from sex. You, can you fix that? Yeah, thanks for getting off of there. I could actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what were you going to say, yeah. Mike? No. Uh, never mind. It's fine. Okay. Do you do you find it is a turn on to the other person though for you to be direct, like say say so they know what to do to make oh, you yeah. ple pleasure Ooh. you? Yeah. Yeah. I like I I like you were in a marriage where I didn't feel. Like, I, I felt stifled from being able to say what I wanted, and a lot of that was on me. Um, and coming out of that, I'm mm -hmm. still I'm still learning to ask for what I want and still learning to 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 yeah. to give those signals or explicitly mm -hmm. say things. And I, there was an incident recently with uh, boyfriend Bobby where, like, he, I think I pushed him onto his knees to suck my dick, and he's like, oh, my God, it was so hot. Like, mm -hmm. afterwards, it was so hot when you, like... <laughs> You know, just yeah. a tiny little dumb moment of like, yeah. you know, asking for or demanding what I wanted. And yeah. Sorry, I meant to give that daddy oh. shirt to you, Dan. I'm so sorry I messed that up. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know until this moment that was for you. <laughs> well, and I think, again, it's really unfair that your experience and mine are so the same, but really there's a oh, lot yeah. of differences. And yeah, my age <laughs> and. Yeah, um, but if you're not if you're not your own advocate, no matter what it is, medical, you know, your whatever, and the same in bed, then sorry, yeah. so sad. They always say with doctors, you. You, you have to be your own advocate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Treat every hookup yeah. like they're your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, they usually yeah. start with a prostate yeah. exam, yeah. so yeah, it could be fun. <laughs> uh, this there question comes yeah. from Sarah, who is in our in the in the she's she's watching the live stream Hi. right now, uh, and says we are rocking sex positive moms. What's your advice for raising confident, accepting of all, and advocating for all kids? Gosh, I don't know if I can even. Uh, I I don't think well, it's not how you're raised unless. If you have open-minded parents, which I did, uh, to a point, I mean, to whatever was socially acceptable. But um, I talked to my dad today about about the Gage podcast, and I wanted to get home so I could put Skype on and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I told him the question about what would you say to a parent who's rejected their child? And I said, I you know, I just told him, and he goes, yeah, and like libido and, you know, stuff like that. And um not that i ever could just have a conversation with my parents about anything they weren't really available but um it's uniquely what you decide to be open about and decide is icky or different or what your maybe your friends or your other other things that persuade you um I don't think there's any methodology or any formula. I, it's just, I think, spin the wheel <laughs> and hope, you know, hope that they have had this, the best exposure um, that you don't say crap, you know, um, about things that you know are it's wrong. Or, or if you're that guy, then hopefully they'll grow away from the idea of, of, prejudice and bigotry and negativity if you if you just ch help them choose to be positive regardless of what it is but i don't know that i did such a great job of doing that i, mean, I don't have, know you tell you me, three Mikey. kids that are <laughs> open loving accepting from what i've seen and so 
yeah. most mostly Mike does that too. So like, yeah. <laughs> so there's there's something that they. I think both you did and they did to give credit to everyone that, yeah. that worked. I, I, I have this, I have this theory that like how good of a person you are, you can measure sort of by how different someone can be from you and you still consider them human or appear mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. straight yeah. white cisgender yeah. male Christian man. Like mm-hmm. you, those are all knobs that you can turn to whatever their opposites are able bodied. Like th- there's, there's, a, there's that whole list of things. Yeah. How many of those can be the other way before you stop seeing them as a, as a human or as a person and, and something that, that mom and, and her parents by extension, I think really did very, very well is, is, mm-hmm. is teach us that, uh, every single one of those can be the other one and there's still a human that's that's worth connecting yeah. with that is is a, a valuable and and someone to cherish and love and uh i'm really i'm really grateful for that um and yeah it's just a matter of respect you don't have to like me or love me but you need to respect me or you need to treat me kindly because i didn't what did i ever do to you you're just meeting someone and you go, okay, what do you like fucking? You like, you know. First question. That's not, that's not how Jack it is. Lanterns. Either they're a good, kind, oh, wait, we're not, loving we person not or they're not. <laughs> this is not wrong. Uh, I, I do. I do. You know, maybe that's why I'm single. <laughs> what do you like to fuck? I, well, I, I like some of the things you're like talking about are not directives, are not instructional do this it's more demonstrating both I deserve respect. That's what you're just saying. Like I'm a person that deserves respect and also putting out positivity like yourself. Like I think so much like uh, kids inherent what their parents do. So if you're modeling that behavior, if you like what you're talking about, if you're letting people know that you deserve respect and everyone does by model, like you don't have to say that. I mean, great if you say that, but like by modeling that behavior that uh, I think that then your kids pick up on that. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, seems like they have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm cracking the whip. We got we got to get going. Yeah. We're, we're, oh, we're, can we do one okay. yep. short one? Absolutely. And then the, the heavy one that we yep. sent her. Okay, short one. This one comes from Stuart. Have you been custom fit for a bra before? <laughs> I promised you an underwear question, uh, so I, I had to sneak it in. Yes, yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. All right, uh, and then that, that it was fun. <laughs> was it fun? Did you say it was fun? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was fun. I don't think that's the intention, but you know. <laughs> All right. So this everything's fun if you just have the work mind to do that. It's <laughs> true. So we'll finish Ma Johnson's <laughs> questions with this one, uh, which was a, a bit heavier and came from came to us from Sparkplug and they specifically asked that we send it to Patty ahead of time so she had some time to ponder on it. Uh oh, fuck, I'm gonna cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you read it, Mike? No, I don't no. think I could. No. <laughs> Jesus, do we need me to uh, read it? My mother rejected me when I came out at the age of 20. Mothers and fathers who have not rejected their children for being LGBTQIA plus are heroes to me. <sighs> Thank you for being a hero. Wow. Okay. If you could confront mothers who have rejected their children for being LGBTQIA plus, what might you say? What's your fucking problem? <laughs> oh. I, the person that's in front of you two seconds ago before they said the words, they're the same person after they said the words. They're the same person, the same exact uh, loving person that has your DNA that you gave birth to that is, um, you know, it's just like I said a little bit ago. It's none of your business really what my what my um, preferences are and it's it's not if i overtly did something to hurt you uh, uh other words uh, uh physical uh, something like that that you would have a reason to dislike me or not love me or reject me i did not do this to piss you off i did not have a choice i did not say oh Today, I think I'll just go talk to my mom and tell her I'm gay and really set her, you know, <laughs> that's that's just the worst ignorance that there could be that you would ever think that a person, especially somebody you love so much, 
would do that. Um, it, it boggles my mind that anyone could reject their child for any reason. It should be unconditional, but because it isn't, um, maybe maybe they need to have uh, reset uh, a second chance to to rethink it or regroup it. Maybe the delivery part of it was um, something that they couldn't handle. But when you look at their personality, just in general, do they do they roll with stuff, or are they very rigid, or do they, um, you know, have they always been an asshole to you, or you know, less loving, or uh, and it is nothing to do with you and what you just imparted, except that you want their acceptance and you want their love. You're not doing it to be obtuse, or I mean, not obtuse, but just opposite of of them, just to just to make them feel uncomfortable or make them, you know, feel like you're doing this to be an asshole and you're not. Um, I would say uh, there's got to be second chances once we ponder. Um, and if, if not, then um, find your, find your tribe, find your people that are accepting and loving. And there's so little support anyway in general that your own parent can't um em still embrace you is sad but if it's not about you and you can't change them then you're just going to have to go on and and um maybe maybe keep making efforts you know you can't if they cut you off and you cut them off where's where's the medium where's where's there any negotiation or any conversation about acceptance so that's all i know i i just could never imagine rejecting my own child that i had in my stomach for nine months plus that one was like 11 months <laughs> right. holy shit kind of explains Boy. a little bit about him <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah he's always late so. <laughs> Is that is that an answer or no? Yeah, just my answer. feelings. Yeah, that has absolutely. resonated very much in the in the chat for sure. People are yeah. Um, oh good. Okay. Thank you, Ma Johnson. Before we take a break, I have one more thing that I want to do. Okay. What? I still haven't asked the the question the the green question. Oh sure, so you, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll sure. do that after. Okay, we have one more question, but before that, Dan, this is for you. From oh. me and Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is from us. Um, so, we're not, we, we are, you can open it. Yeah. Are you, uh, I believe one of your biggest love languages is words of affirmation. So, Mike and I got you a little oh. container and inside there are a bunch of note cards about things we like about you. So <laughs> we each wrote a bunch How of. How am I supposed to ask you a question? <laughs> <laughs> we each wrote some stuff that we uh, enjoy, or appreciate about you, and put in a little skull head thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's really lovely. Thank you. Yeah, that's very, very. Yeah, broken. so we're hoping the. Ne the, the, the next time we piss you off, maybe you can pull one of yeah, those. One, every time, every time we do something that annoys you, just draw one of the cards and read it, and remember that we still like you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, can I do two short questions? Yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, it's okay. our fucking show. We'll do what we want That's to. True. I just wanted to try to get so many people. So many people submitted stuff, and yeah, thank you for um, everyone who sent in questions. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. We we can't possibly it would be an hours and hours and hours show if we answered everything but um so i'm gonna miss some people um this one this question i don't know how it was intended but um i think it's an important question to answer uh logan wrote to us and said how small is too small for you guys hmm. i think suv small suv <laughs> Is the the <laughs> smallest I'll go? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you're a tall guy. How well, yeah. yeah, and how else am I going to fit my room. surfboards <laughs> and road bikes? Your stand up paddle boards. <laughs> and my paddle. So. Yeah, so. bro. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I love dicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, it's interesting. Like especially recently, I uh, this is something I've like definitely evolved on and gotten better at. Like especially as my body shape changes a lot over the years, like 
accepting and liking lots of other body shapes. And like someone asked me recently what my type and I was like, Oh God, like, okay. I've had some like very short jacked Asian dude. Fuck me recently. And I had like a like big, like muscly, like he's sub in his other relationship, but likes to top every now and then. Like I've had like, I've hooked up with daddies and like, there's just all this writing. Like, Tops is, is your type. Anyone who put it in me. <laughs> yeah. um, I, and I, like d- bigger does not equal better sex. Yeah. And uh, big dicks are fun and a lot of fun to play with, but also like, yeah, the, I've, I think the, uh, maybe the smallest guy I've hooked up with is like four inches or so. And like, Boy, did he hit the prostrate right. Like, that was a, like, perfect size to just, like, and, yeah, that was great. So, like, honestly, it's, it's like, the pansexual answer to who are you into. Like, I don't like people. I just like dicks. Like, I just like <laughs> It's not about who you are. It's about your dick. <laughs> and I, I enjoy dicks. And, like, the, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I have, have an answer of, I don't think there is too small. And I think... People place so much importance on having a giant dick when, like, that feels great, and also small dicks feel great, and medium <laughs> dicks feel great. Yeah. Like, yeah, I kind of dislike the. A lot of people like, oh, it's not the length; it's the the thickness that matters. Like, mm-hmm. oh, well, now you've just <laughs> insulted everyone that doesn't have it's a different dick. Yeah, like, yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. come mm-hmm. on. Man. Yeah, there's something you can do with any size dick. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you don't have a dick, like, there's. There's so many fun things we've done without someone's dick involved that include toys or making out or cuddling or like there's our next episode's going to talk a little bit about when the dick's not involved. Mm. Yeah. Do I... You won't it? remember. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what was Any your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, the, the answer, the, the limit does not exist. Mean girls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think. You know, the we, limit does not exist. We, <laughs> we 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 joke about me being a size queen, and yeah. I, I'm not. I'm a size aficionado. I, I love a big old <laughs> dick, but like like that's by no means a requirement. Absolutely not a requirement whatsoever. And I I have fun with all, all kinds of dudes, and um, uh, like it, like I I hook up with trans guys. Like what like whatever. Uh, like um, that's not. The the answer is there is there, there's none that are too small. Yeah. And and end of end of answer. I think the um like w- what are the value that smaller dicks bring? Like I get to feel like a rock star. Like it's so I have a, as a, as a smaller butthole gentleman. Um, <laughs> I I rarely get to feel like just a fucking rock star. And if someone has a smaller dick that like I can take very easily, I'm like like I get to feel like. I am the like super bottom that I've always wanted to feel like and never get to with bigger dicks. So like that feels great. There's like, I mentioned hitting the prostate. There's a certain like length that like is much shorter than you would expect that like feels very good. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, people with smaller dicks, uh, not a rule, but like have not had to rely on just, I have a big dick and that's the end of the <laughs> list of my, like they yeah. like, so <laughs> it's, it's like people that used to be like, I don't know, heavier, and now they're like in shape. It's like they they have not relied on being just hot all the time to like for sex. So there's a lot of fun things about guys with smaller dicks. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on, mom. <laughs> Ma Johnson has an opinion yes, about mom. this, which worries me. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say split or whole. Her did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Oh, more more inside jokes from the Johnson. Oh, it's so great. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and if you want to hear my thoughts on dick size Ooh. and uh, and sort of the inverse of what Kyle was talking about, be about being the the smaller dicked top uh, with uh, with uh, yeah, listen to my fruit bowl episode. I talk Ooh. all about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fruit bowl podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See how I did that. Yeah. And uh, fucking Dan's going to answer more questions on Patreon. So yeah, if yeah. you're on the live stream, stick around for a little bit. We'll we'll have Dan answer more questions. And also, if you're uh, listening later, join our Patreon. Yeah, in addition to the speed round. Speed round. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah.
right. Um, last question. Mm-hmm. This was the one question Kyle said that we really should yeah, make sure that we include. Mm-hmm. Culture. This mm-hmm. comes from an anonymous source. I don't know who it was. Who could it have been? I don't know. Uh, do you know of any short, uplifting gay podcasts that come out every single day? Feature other gay podcasters, have fun games, audience participation, important LGBT history, and a whole lot of heart? I need more positive gay influences in my life. Hmm. No, I don't know of any. No. <laughs> Next <right>. question. <laughs> right. that's, that's, this has been gayish. <laughs> Mike, do you know of anything? Yes. Have a nice gay. Have a nice gay is our other podcast, and we indeed have other podcasters on as hosts and participants all the time and we have fun little games and we do queer history stuff and we do book recommendations and we do songs we like you it's five minutes or less of your day and it's amazing please go check it out yeah uh, and we've got so uh, i we just got an email back from a uh probable new co-host that yeah. might be popping in mm. they're a lady <laughs> mm. <laughs> on our gay show <laughs> um, yeah my, uh, I, I will also say Mike uh, spends a lot of time working on uh, producing he's he's uh, especially been um, r- really wants to include as many voices in participation like it, it, Mike has added a lot of work to himself to try to make this really cool thing um, for you all and, and I you know participate in it but Mike spends a ton of time on it so Thank you, Mike, for for everything you do there, and uh, I know the people that listen to it. Um, it's it's just nice to to hear something nice about being gay. Yeah. You know, it was very different. I feel like I'm always like very heavy and like, oh, everything sucks on this show. But on that show, it's like it's just like, what are cool things about being gay? Yeah. There are not enough things that are just like, what are cool things about being gay? Yeah, yeah. And that, I may have learned more gay history from having a nice gay yeah. than from gayish. Oh, no mm-hmm. way. Like, it's I mean, it's little tidbits, but it's always yeah. like this this. Just enough information. I'm like, fuck. How did I not know about that? This one organization yeah. or this one event yeah. or like, yeah, yeah. So, thank you for the question, anonymous. That's very <laughs> sweet of you to ask. <laughs> um, so, did we do it? We didn't get to everyone's questions, uh, but we're we're like Kyle said, we would be here all day if we if we tried to do all of them. Um, and, and stick around after for the Zoom thing, and you can ask us questions. And maybe oh, that's we'll true. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. Um, should we take a break? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> this is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. Hi, everybody. Kyle went to the bathroom. Are we back? No, we're not back yet. Not till. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. We have a tradition Jesus. that on live streams. That I knock the table. As we, do, we, as take, we take a shot. Uh, Dan, Dan doesn't have to do. <laughs> I want this one. <laughs> HR is gonna hear about I think it's this. Smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you want this one? I guess slightly oh. smaller. Oh, okay. You don't have to. Is smaller better? <laughs> You'll hear smaller about it better. on our picture. <laughs> to two fifty kids. Cheers. Two, Cheers. Two hundred and fifty kids. <laughs> in my butt. Mm-hmm. I'll be talking about <laughs> that in my Patreon segment. <laughs> for next okay. Week. okay. Reynolds okay. is joining us here as well on the video. He hates this, <laughs> if you can tell. Oh, kisses. That's what he does. Like, he has lots of, like, like, licking, like, it says different things. If he licks me now, it is, let me down, please. <laughs> All right. Um, Sometimes I lick my tops to say, let me down, please. <laughs> get it get it together. Oh, shit. Are we just doing a are, show? Are we, are we back? Oh, we're back. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're going to do our gayest and straightest. We're going to do our gayest and straightest, but first, our website is gayishpodcast.com. We are on social media at Gayish Podcast. Remember, the contest is for Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to participate, send your the podcast that dot 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 answer and tag your friend on one of those two platforms. But we're also on a bunch of other shit. Yeah, we'll get those posts up tomorrow. Yeah. Our hotline, you can send us text mix. Ooh. I got Ooh. drunk, apparently. Text Mex. Even... We'll send you text Mex. <laughs> Our hotline, you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails. is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rate supply. Our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. And our physical mailing address is post office box 19882, Seattle, Washington, 98109. It does that from memory every time. Uh, every time. I, I, I've said it so many times. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it just rolls right off the tongue, just like a top. Um, okay, so uh, just so everybody knows, we are going to do our Gaze of Stratus, and, and then uh, afterwards there is a Zoom after party. We're posting the link in our Facebook group and in the Discord server. It will not be on the Facebook page. So uh, if you're not part of the Facebook group, you should join it. It's almost 2,400 people now, and they wow. are a party time. Wait, when is the... Is that before or after the Patreon segment that we're recording? We're, we're going to do, do Patreon. Stick around for the Patreon stuff after the show, and then we will go to the Zoom after party. It'll probably be five-ish by the time we get all of this shit done, but we'll just roll right into it yeah. uh, and hang out and have beverages because it's, it's fun. Um, did I miss anything? I think we did it. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Do we have a, um, uh, a listener's gay Astratus? No, an announcement about the, um, oh, 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 I, um, I've added to the website. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whisper it quietly into your microphone. Um, uh, we've added a help. <laughs> well, Dan, now people are going to think di- di- that's... <laughs> Um, there is a help page, which is not to free Ma Johnson. <laughs> it is, it is uh, uh, gayishpodcast.com slash help. Uh, we're going to start uh, adding and including. You know, we, have, we have heavy topics. We have episodes that we think require additional resources to help support you through that if you decide to listen. Um, so, yeah, we're putting that on our page, gayishpodcast.com slash help. It's up there right now and will continue to be built out and improved. Um, but it's just a resource for LGBT people if they need it for, you know, sexual health, for mental health, for physical health, um, a lot of things that we need. So yep. um, that'll you may hear us refer to that on future episodes if we talk about something heavier needs, you know, kind of references. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Check it out. Uh, Gays and straightest? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to go first. So the, uh, the straightest thing about me this week, here's the thing. <laughs> My ex-husband bought the bed that I now sleep in and told me, because it was the two of us and a dog, an 85-pound Labrador, <laughs> that we needed to get a California King, and that was a California King. I've said many times it's a California King. I buy California King sized sheets when they are available. That is a California King bed. I ordered a new mattress because I very much needed a new mattress because the old mattress was turning into a taco. Yeah, because you kept fucking in the middle. Because I kept fucking in the middle. Sure. Um, and uh, uh, it got here. I ordered a California King. That is not a California King frame. <laughs> that is a standard King frame. It does not fit. So I learned this week a California King is narrower but longer. I, I thought it was bigger in all respects. Mm. That's not true. They are narrower and longer. Because everything's my... bigger in California? I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kings reign longer? Yeah. I don't know. So, so now it's just like like a tall dude in a short bed like it with the feet hanging over the edge. The mattress just hangs over the edge of the bed. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, not not actually measuring. is. I just mm. feel like that's a straight guy thing to do to just be like, boom, I'm yeah. ordering it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Want to know a perk of uh, being short? <gasps> what? You can put the sheets on sideways and then you have more length on the sides because oh. you don't need the length. Oh, that's insane hack how That's do you insane. live your life life, life, <laughs> life pro tip from gayish. uh the gayest thing about me is that my solution to this problem was not to fix the mattress but i ordered all new furniture for my bedroom <laughs> 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 I said, fuck it visa visa yeah, yeah. visa fix it <laughs> uh how about you Kyle? what's your gayest straightest um my straightest is that my uh fire alarm started like doing that chirping thing and at first i was just like I'll ignore it and it'll go away. This problem only exists if it keeps going and it kept going. Yep. So yep. I can stand on like the cusp of my bed and adjust the, like reach the fire alarm and turn it. Yeah, but like you have tall ceilings in your bare- place. They're not, oh, well, I, and I'm a tall individual. Like I could just barely get it. So I think straight dudes refuse to pull in like, I have things I could have yeah. pulled into stand stool, on, but they would have like a ladder. Took a, 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 <laughs> would have like I can do this from here, and I spent so much time trying to put the thing back together after I changed the battery. Like put the thing back together, and I was like, I refuse to go get this stool, and I could not do it. And eventually, I just had to go get the stool like a dumb, st- you know. I feel like straight people do this. Like, fine, I'll finally get the tool that I actually required for this job yep. from the very beginning because yep. I can't 
force this to happen yep absolutely it's like it's like straight guys not asking for help exactly like, won't oh, even ask for help from inanimate oh, yeah. objects exactly <laughs> i don't need that i can just reach up and just keep turning this yes uh the gayest thing about me which is not very gay in my, the full picture of my life but of late it is fairly gay is i went on a gay date oh which sometimes it's just called a date um yeah, a date. on a date last night yeah great yeah how was it it was great i uh drank some drinks and he said nice things about me which got me all flustered and embarrassed yeah and he's very handsome and it was a lot of fun excellent yeah did you bang did you bang <laughs> we have we, <laughs> straightest thing my we we've already bung so oh. yeah We'll have bunged. No, we we have had bunged. <laughs> we'll have had bunged. <laughs> um, a listener's gay so straight as this Ooh. week. Uh, I'm taking one directly from the chat. I hope that's yeah. okay with this person. Um, uh, Jeff Edison Jones. My straightest for the week is doing my minor bicycle maintenance. I oiled the chain and gears. Yes, mm. mechanic stuff. Mm -hmm. Always, always mm. a good bet, especially when they require. An item like you using like whatever chain lube yep. that you were talking about. Like if you require one item to fix it, yeah. My gayest for the week is considering to start wearing eyeliner and painting my nails again, <gasps> which I probably will. Yes, yeah, cute. Let's not go. <laughs> um Mom, do you have a gayest straightest? Oh, do you want to do one? Putting on the spot. We didn't ask you for this, but you know it always confuses me because i don't i i'm uh, gay and straight all every day all day long so like um does buying wine in a six pack <laughs> <laughs> i don't know which that is absolutely i think that's yeah. gay yes. <laughs> and then um and yeah and then uh of course drinking it all is just the straightest <laughs> shit ever just gotta go there yeah oh, that's, that's it <laughs> um well that is it Wait, oh, uh, go ahead. oh i want to thank people i was gonna thank mom oh shit. She's here. Okay. thanks you mom can... thanks for being here really appreciate it happy 250th you're welcome. um and uh you're gonna join the zoom call also maybe no are you hanging out yeah. and i could pimp my i could pimp myself out to these other mm. these other gay uh podcast or any podcast that wants to well, wise no. words of wisdom oh. no, no 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 you are a gayish exclusive oh, <laughs> oh. i was like yes absolutely okay, pimper out to promote us oh yeah that's true oh, yeah. you had me with push lady <laughs> <No>. <laughs> love you mom thanks again for being on the market the future marketing <laughs> details of ma johnson forthcoming oh, we'll have that God. figured out by episode 300 um i want to thank uh our super gapergers which are uh i don't we don't just explain who they are on every episode but they're the people that have both contributed at the highest level at the 50 dollar level on our patreon and also have been doing so for a year or more um so the reason they get a little bit of airtime every time. It's just they make this possible week after week, and we really appreciate them. So thank you to Super Gap Bridgers, Forrest Nail, Patrick Martin, Anonymous, Explosive Lasagna, Christopher Farrell, Jamie Pugh, Jamie, Jamie Henderson, Kevin Henderson, <laughs> Kevin Henderson's younger brother, uh, Tipsy McStumbles, Don, Donald Linsky, Thomas B., Dusty Sands, Chris Cachatorian, Jerome York, and Cian and Javi. And I also want to thank Dan, you for being here. Thanks for crying, more or less on command. I know, God, that's I wish you would have. <laughs> you should have done it more. That's fine. We'll add a quota in your. But thank you for being here, and you've done like, man, anything that like requires any level of organization is probably Dan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I someone even asked on the Discord channel that we have like, oh, I think like we were talking about like. Uh, uh, queers folk and Dan might have said something about a British and I was like oh I cut the discussion where Dan in detail has explained the UK versus American you know <laughs> it's like if in question Dan is Dan is right so like, <laughs> um, so thank you for that and Mike thank you to you for I don't know being my partner and talking about shit and and it's weird to think that the podcast is real life yeah because it sometimes feels like a different thing but then I remember that like we actually talk about our, our real lives when we talk about it, I don't know. Yeah. It's very weird. Okay. A podcast with I know you. we're trying to end the show. And <laughs> I legit just this morning had the thought of like, 
God, I wish I was the type of person that had their shit together enough to make a journal and journal every day. Mm. Like, no, I have a weekly podcast where I talk about dicks and ass and my you mental health. Need, and yes. like, I, I, this Plus is a daily podcast. It, yeah, and Plus like, a daily. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like heartwarming, this, beautiful podcast. Yeah. This, this is this is better than any journal could have been. I yeah. think. And, and and thank you. This yeah. has been fun. Continues to be fun. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, that is it. Stick around uh, for the Patreon segment after this on the live stream. Um, we're going to do more questions for Dan and a speed round. And then stick around after that for the Zoom after party. Uh, that is it. This, in- this has been Gayish from the Chris Ketchatorian Studios. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be much, be fabulous, be you. See you next week, everybody. See you everybody. next week. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, don't go anywhere. Thank you.